Within days, President Trump is expected to declare the opioid epidemic a national emergency. One of the tools he most often says is crucial in fighting the war on drugs is to build a wall on the border with Mexico. But here's the question when it comes to opioids, what would this wall actually do? Joining us now, CNN Chief Medical Correspondent Dr. Sanjay Gupta has taken a really close look at all these issues. Sanjay. Hey, John, it, it's a great question, and I will start off by saying, you know, look, the, the war on drugs, as people know it, is, is a totally different war nowadays. The drugs are so different, as you're about to see, in terms of potency, in terms of size, in terms of quantity. You could decide uh, what you think, if a wall would actually make a difference. What is the first thing that sort of flags this? Sometimes it's just the driver's behavior. They are unnaturally nervous for crossing the border. Sometimes it's the car hasn't crossed the border a lot, or sometimes it's the car's crossed the border, you know, too often. What you're witnessing here are efforts in stopping drugs from coming through the U.S.-Mexican border. You know, almost every car crossing uh, is crossing for a legitimate reason. It's, it's a very small percentage that comes in carrying contraband. But I think when the inspectors pick up on something, their success rate's pretty high. When you saw the dog sit down at the back of the car, that's how that particular dog alerts. Special agent in charge, Scott Brown, oversees the Tucson field office for Homeland Security investigations. And drugs are a big part of what he does. So this is how it happens. I mean, what we're witnessing here is, is what happens every day along the southwest border of the U.S. And, you know, the officers at the ports of entry are phenomenal. Um, they're uh, fantastic at identifying fresh tool marks that shouldn't be there. So a screw that's been recently turned that there wouldn't really be a reason for it to be recently turned, they can pick up on that. I mean, they're experts. That's just do. human art and intelligence yes, together. absolutely. What they find? About 24 kilos of hard drugs. Minutes later, field testing reveals cocaine. This is a win today. Uh, this is definitely a win. In the midst of the country's opioid epidemic, President Trump has made building up the wall a cornerstone of his agenda. The wall's going to get built, folks. Just in case anybody has any question, the wall's going to get built, and the wall is going to stop drugs. But I wanted to learn just how effective the wall would be at accomplishing that. This literally is a physical wall in between two, two countries that we're looking at here. The vast amount of hard narcotics don't come through at places like this. Uh, the vast amount of hard narcotics uh, come through at the ports of entry where we just were. And besides meth, cocaine, heroin, or marijuana, it's fentanyl, which is 50 times stronger than heroin. It's the biggest challenge nowadays. The most recent numbers from the Centers for Disease Control found that overdose deaths from synthetic opioids like fentanyl rose over 72% in just a year. In the past, cartels might try and smuggle 100 kilograms of drugs across the border. It wasn't easy to do. They were likely to get caught. But here's part of the problem. Nowadays, they could smuggle across something that looks like this. This is just a one kilogram bag of flour. But if this were street fentanyl, it would cost about $8,000 to make, could be turned into a million pills, and then sold for 20 to $30 million on the black market. All of that from a small container that looks like this. The vast majority of fentanyl is produced in China. Um, it comes into the U.S. two ways. Um, you know, it comes into, into Mexico, where it is the Preston pill former combined with heroin. The other way it comes in is American consumers buying it direct, uh, oftentimes from vendors out of China. And then it gets mailed in? U.S. mail, which is the most common, a very small quantity of fentanyl um, is very hard to detect in the masses of, of, of letters that come into the U.S. every day. How effective is a wall at preventing drugs from getting into the United States? In terms of hard narcotics, no, I don't know that we get it immediately safer over hard narcotics. As of right now, the vast majority of hard narcotics come in through the ports of entry um, in deep concealment or come in through you know, the mail or express consignments. And John, I should point out, when it comes to the mail, uh, you may know this, but there's about a million pieces of mail that come in every day that have no electronic record, uh, sort of. We don't know exactly where it came from, how many places that piece of mail may have visited beforehand. So that's the real concern, you know, it's the drugs are so small, as you saw there, John, sending the mail has become a real option for people who are trying to get this into the country. Sanjay, you're holding that, that two pound bag of flour, um, which if, if that were a package of fentanyl, you know, 
a million pain pills. How, how potent is that? It, it's it's so so potent, John. When, when I was in medical school and training, there, there was uh, not, nothing that you'd say is a hundred times more powerful than morphine. But it is. It's a hundred times more powerful than morphine, and they're, they're constantly manipulating it to make it even more powerful than that as well. You've heard about carfentanil probably. Some people have referred to it as an elephant tranquilizer. It's, it's nuts. And people who, who, who think about experimentation in any way, you know, experimenting with drugs, trying it once, those days are over, John, because people who would experiment with something like this are, are literally putting their lives on the line nowadays, given how powerful this stuff is. And again, the economics, as you point out, $8,000 with the raw ingredients could be turned into $30 million. They're just going to keep trying over and over and over again with an incentive like that. Mm. And again, the wall, not exactly a line of defense, according to the officials you talked to against that coming into the country. Dr. Sanjay Gupta, thanks so much for being with us. An important look as we face this this week. In the meantime, a stunning rebuke. Republican Senator Bob Corker slamming the president just before the two men will have lunch. This is getting ugly.